I am going to play a quick news clip from KSDK News. It's about two to three minutes long. It shows how they are preparing for a massive 8.4 magnitude earthquake striking the New Madrid fault line. The city they are preparing in is St. Louis. That will be very important later on in this video. But as of right now, I'm going to go ahead and play that news clip. It has been nearly 34 years since Ivan Browning's prediction of a massive earthquake along the New Madrid Fault on December 3, 1990. The false forecast rattled nerves and had many in the St. Louis region preparing for the big one. So what if an 8.4 magnitude earthquake hits St. Louis? This week, local first responders are working with federal partners and the National Guard to put their response to the test. New tonight, Laura Barcheski got to see the action up close. Laura? I did, Mike and Kelly. This is the first of three days of training, so you'll be seeing those Army vehicles and helicopters around downtown and even out in St. Charles County until the end of the day Wednesday. Earthquakes are just one of many types of disasters our first responders have to prepare for as both Missouri and Illinois sit along the New Madrid Fault. Certainly the makeup of our city and the metropolitan area as a whole um, does present us with a lot of opportunities for damage, the need for assessment. Um, we're known for our brick structures. Um, Bricks and earthquakes are, are not a great match. The U.S. Army National Guard Task Force 46 worked alongside St. Louis Fire, Police, and other emergency personnel to respond to lifelike scenarios using mannequins and fake high-rise rescues and even vehicle pileups. The cars are piled up in order to give the uh, urban search and rescue uh, team a chance and opportunity to improve upon their uh, skill set in uh, cutting into cars and extracting patients from, from uh, vehicles. They also had about 40 volunteers from the community in makeup with different types of fake injuries to go through a triage scenario. So looking at the different types of injuries, being able to sort them or triage them into if they required urgent medical needs and then where they would go from there. And mock chemical decontamination tents were set up so that first responders could practice running through it themselves and working with civilian actors. For this specific scenario, uh, there was a, a rail car or a series of rail cars that were damaged because of the earthquake and they, they released uh, vinyl chloride or some, some nasty chemicals into the area. St. Louis Emergency Management Commissioner Sarah Russell says doing this kind of training prepares them to keep St. Louis in safe. We get to practice locally and even with some of our state partners on a regular basis, but it's less frequent that we're able to partner and exercise and train alongside of our federal partners. Tomorrow they'll be working downtown again near Bush Stadium and they'll also be working on the Mississippi River in St. Charles to assemble a temporary bridge. So if you see mannequins, army vehicles and other activity on the river, don't panic. It's all part of the drill. This earthquake striking the New Madrid fault line is not something I just started talking about on this channel. I have been talking about this massive earthquake for months now even before the April 8th solar eclipse. Now look, I get it, I am not a weather channel. I'm not a channel that monitors these earthquakes. There are channels that do and they are great at what they do, but what I do happen to cover are patterns, repetitions, things constantly shown to us in news and media, things constantly shoved into our faces. So then you may be saying this is completely normal. First responders, they do have to practice in case a natural disaster strikes and they are just practicing now. But the thing is, the government ran multiple, multiple simulations at the start of 2024 when it comes to the New Madrid fault line and this earthquake. The government, first responders, and so forth already ran simulations back in February of 2024 around the New Madrid area during earthquake preparedness week. So why randomly, out of nowhere, are they running simulations again? Are they running drills again? Here's the thing, the New Madrid fault line is now at its most active. Going into 2024, there has been over 177 mini earthquakes. The United States Geological Survey has confirmed that there have already been 177 New Madrid quakes in 2024 so far, and that is a conservative count. The number could be a lot higher. The most powerful earthquake to strike the New Madrid fault line in 2024 was on May 16th. It had been felt in Missouri and felt by hundreds that day. These mini earthquakes are clustering up over the New Madrid fault line, and there is such a thing known as clustering of precursory earthquakes 
that can occur over just a few months or over a period of decades prior to the major earthquake. The larger the coming earthquake is, the larger the precursors will be, and the longer the period and larger the area occupied by the precursors. So like I said in the beginning of 2024, out of nowhere, the USGS ran simulations to show the terror of a 7.7 .7 New Madrid quake in Missouri. They are giving us a play-by-play -play how this earthquake will play out. Carbondale, Illinois and Clarksville, Tennessee are also both devastated as many buildings crumble. As the shake radius expands, buildings tumble in Jonesboro, Arkansas and Memphis, Tennessee. The metro area of St. Louis is next when the 7.7 .7 New Madrid quake brings down every building that isn't earthquake proof. Oklahoma, Kansas, Kentucky will all be impacted. They are running the numbers. I am not making any of this up. They said that there would be an estimated $300 billion in damages, leaving 2.6 million households without power. Thousands would lose their lives instantly. They are crunching the numbers. They are crunching the totals. And what's worse is they now have predictive programming. They now have Hollywood getting involved, showing us the devastating effects of this earthquake striking the New Madrid fault line. This is how we know something is going on and they're not telling us, they're showing us, but they're not outright telling us. So we have the computer simulations. We have multiple physical simulations being ran around multiple states surrounding the New Madrid fault line. And now we have these movies coming out showing us that there will be a massive earthquake striking the New Madrid fault line. We have news articles talking about this movie. They really want us to see this movie. I am reading this from Yahoo News. Earthquakes destroy Missouri in new Tubi movie. A Tubi original movie called Continental Split dramatizes the threat of the New Madrid Fault, which has a 25 to 40% chance of a magnitude 6 or greater earthquake in the next 50 years. Now, I would indeed believe that this earthquake would strike in the next 50 years. A lot of us would still be alive, God willing, if it was not for the fact of weather manipulation, weather modification, that is indeed very real. Yes, the New Madrid fault line is a naturally active fault line. But if you have something like HARP targeting this fault line, increasing the frequency, increasing the activity, that 40% chance over 50 years in the next 50 years has now decreased to a 40% chance in months. Given everything that parallels the early 1800s, the two great solar eclipses crossing paths over the New Madrid fault line, the appearance of a very rare comet, the emergence of two different broods of cicadas, the reports of very bizarre weather. All of this had taken place around the exact same time in the early 1800s. 1811, 1812. Then only mere months later, there was a series of earthquakes so massive, they are still reported as the top three worst earthquakes of all time in North America. Something like that striking in today's world, you can forget about it. The USGS even states that if something like that were to happen today, multiple states would be uninhabitable. We see this massive increase of attention on the New Madrid fault line from all different sources. The simulations, the movies, the news reports. This is not a coincidence. So then you might be saying, well, if this earthquake strikes, what can I do about it? There's nothing I can do about it. But why be a sitting duck? Yes, not all of us can pick up and move. That's not feasible for a lot of us. But most of us can get supplies. We can get batteries. We can get extra water. We can try to make ourselves more secure in case something like this strikes. Even if this massive earthquake does not happen, earthquakes still happen, disasters still happen. It's always good to be prepared with extra supplies. I am on the southeast coast of the United States. If this massive earthquake were to strike the New Madrid fault line, it does not look good for where I am at either. I am going to start to stock up because the thing is, they are talking about this fault line. They are talking about this earthquake way too frequently for my liking. Maps have come out years ago showing what the United States would look like if this earthquake were to strike the New Madrid fault line. Basically, this earthquake would split the United States into two. There is indeed a lot of news going on lately, everything that's going on with Trump, and then we have these 
bizarre outages taking place across the world. But even with that going on, I am still going to keep my eyes on what's going on with the New Madrid fault line and these increasing series of many earthquakes. So look forward to those new videos as well pertaining to those outages and I have new information as to what took place at the Trump rally as well. But in any case, thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please like, as any engagement does help the channel grow. Once again, thank you so much for your support.